Along with hockey, winter, and maple syrup, beer and Canada go hand in hand. Canadians can't get enough of the frosty beverage. In fact, last year, the average Canadian adult drank almost 75 liters of beer. And it's no surprise, the craft of beer brewing in Canada has been perfected over hundreds of years. But when did it all begin? And how did our beer become the vibrant and delicious commodity it is today? Canada's beer history is as diverse as the country itself. It all started back in the 17th century, when the First Nations made spruce beer. With its high vitamin C content, this particular beer was crucial in preventing scurvy in early settlers. The settlers in Quebec continued to make spruce beer well into the 18th century. That was, until the British took over Quebec and brought with them their ales and stouts. And we all know the British like their beer. And that remained true as they established themselves in Canada. Beer was such a popular beverage that even British soldiers were given an allowance, or beer money. The ration of beer allocated to British soldiers was essential for the rise of local brewers and taverns across the country. At the time, the ales and stouts were imported from Britain and were therefore rather expensive. Local entrepreneurs took the opportunity to make a profit by creating local breweries and taverns. The interesting thing about beer is whatever we've been as a country, beer has followed, maybe even led. Ian Coots is a beer historian and the author of Brew North, How Canada Made Beer and Beer Made Canada, and The Perfect Keg. It really gets started after the conquest in the 18th century, and it was done in a very small scale sort of a business, although by people, some of whom are still around today, such as Molson. You might find a brewery basically wherever there were British soldiers. So you'd see some in Montreal, later on places like London, Ontario. It was highly local and highly regional. During this time, Canada saw the rise of brewers whose names we recognize today, such as Molson, Alexander Keith, and John H. Sleeman, among several others. Ales and stouts were the mainstream beverages of choice for decades, that is, until light, crispy lagers came along thanks to the Germans. There's a great wave of German immigration that arrives in the United, largely in the United States, to a lesser extent in Canada in the 1840s. Before that, the beers that you're seeing in North America are all British in nature. They're ales, which is they're made with a top fermenting yeast. The Germans brought with them something that was very distinct and unique to Germany, which was lager, made with a, a yeast that had been discovered a couple of centuries before that was interesting in that it fermented at much lower temperatures, took longer to ferment, but produced a beverage that wasn't dark like an ale, but was clear, a light amber color. With an enormous fresh water supply, the ability to grow barley and rye in our cold climate, and the population's appreciation of a good brew, beer was a natural fit into Canadian culture. Early Canadians didn't typically drink beer at home, nor did they drink it alone. So where could a Canadian enjoy a pint or two in the early days? Right from the brewery itself, which was also a tavern. Taverns popped up throughout Canada and could be found scattered among newly settled areas of the country. Not only were taverns a place for men and women to enjoy a local brew, but it served as a hub for the community. In the early days, taverns were also used as town council chambers, impromptu church services, or even theatrical productions. It was the place to be to find out the latest news and the goings-on in other parts of the world. When these taverns hosted community events, it certainly didn't stop them from their core purpose, to serve beer. In fact, there are even tales of judges drinking while hearing cases inside the taverns themselves. But alas, all good things must come to an end. With the rise of the temperance movement and the need for grains and fruit to be rationed for the war effort, prohibition came into effect across Canada. Under prohibition law, breweries could still produce their beer, but they couldn't sell it locally. This caused beer drinking in Canada to plummet, and many local breweries were forced to close their business. However, some breweries used the law to their advantage. Unlike the United States, where they managed to get alcohol banned completely between the end of the First World War and the 1930s, uh, temperance in Canada, or prohibition rather, was always a piecemeal thing. Quebec only had it for a year, Ontario for six or seven years, BC for four or five years, and it never worked very well because you could do things like ship beer back and forth across provincial boundaries. The majority of Canadian provinces ended their prohibition era by the 1930s, with the exception of PEI, which remained dry until 1948. Clearly, prohibition didn't work. Perhaps the biggest effect of prohibition in Canada was the consolidation in the industry. By the end of prohibition, there weren't as many independent brewers left. 
so it became a matter of efficiency to merge several breweries together. The bigger consolidation, which begins after the Second World War, begins when Canadian breweries, Molson and Labatt, decide they want to create national brands. For instance, Molson Canadian, Molson Export, uh, Blue 50, um, Black Label, those sorts of beers. And decades later, these iconic brands continue to be enjoyed by beer lovers. The emergence of microbreweries in the mid-1980s once again changed the landscape of Canadian beer and breweries, which continues to grow to this day. What started as a lobby for the provincial governments to allow small-scale production of beer has now created a wonderful assortment of locally made beers in communities across the country. With many product offerings from breweries large and small, Canadians have access to one of the largest selections of beer styles in the world. The word I always use is beertopia, which is, it's, I think it's great. I mean, there's really a beer for every taste. The thing is, the industry just keeps going forward. I, the industry, I mean, it's a fantastic thing. We still love it. And um, I think this is probably the best time to be a beer drinker in the last 200 years in Canada. With the number of breweries in Canada at an all-time high, Canadians' insatiable appetite for beer shows no signs of stopping.